Now, the past few days has been a pretty wild severe weather event. I mean, for the past week, we have had violent, strong tornadoes touch down in areas that we never expected them to even touch. For the most part, we have seen tornado outbreak after tornado outbreak. Violent tornadoes, like I said just a second ago, in areas that aren't even under a tornado threat, as well as that strong winds, catastrophic damage reported with those large to very large hail in excess of four inches in diameter. It's been wild. And with a lot of these areas, the Storm Prediction Center highlighting lower risk that shouldn't even be seeing a bunch of these storms, they're seeing a lot of them, and it's it's absolutely sprawling out of control over the, like, the past week, two weeks, already 100% over the amount of tornadoes that we're supposed to be seeing in this time frame, to the point that we are second in the most tornadoes recorded uh, for the month of April in history. And you may be thinking, hey, we got a chance to take a break. Let's take it. We do not. Multiple rounds of severe weather future on the way. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Into it. Now, hello, everybody. My name is Christian. Welcome back to Skycast. Thank you for tuning in. And we have a lot to cover. Not only have we had a huge tornado outbreak over the past week or two, including strong tornadoes, winds in excess of EF5 wind speeds, but we, we have more severe weather on the way, which once again could bring a lot more of those tornado outbreak style storms, uh, squall lines, as well as that strong winds, extremely large hail. Let's get right into it. Now I am going to temporarily move my remove my webcam because we do have this map here uh, on the bottom of your screen. It should be the guy who made it. Uh, his name is Peter. So shout out to Peter. Uh, April 2024 tornado warnings, PDS tornado warnings, plus uh, tornado emergencies. Uh, this is by Peter Forrester. Uh, so thank you to him for allowing me to use this. Uh, this right here is his Twitter page. If you're curious on who uh, he is, he posts a lot of cool different weather content. Uh, and you can kind of see a bunch of all these tornado warnings uh, that were issued in the uh, month of April 2024. And you have tornado warnings all the way over here from Wyoming, uh, Nebraska, a ton of them and uh, portions of Missouri uh, into Iowa, a bunch of them into Texas, uh, Oklahoma. And this kind of shows you how active Tornado Alley can be because you can see you have random tornado warnings over here in areas like, you know, T Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, down here into Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and then you have just a bunch of these clusters, tornado emergencies, uh, PDS, uh, strong tornadoes, violent tornadoes uh, in this area. Uh, so that kind of just goes to show how active Tornado Alley can be. Uh, we did have a, a, a decent tornado outbreak uh, not in the Kentucky area, uh, Indiana, Illinois, into portions of Ohio as well as that, some larger tornado warnings uh, over into portions of West Virginia. Uh, but for the most part, the Central Plains has stolen the show for this. And now if we're looking at all the reports that we're seeing right now, of course we have all these areas over here where we're seeing a lot of those wind events, a couple of those tornado reports where we've seen that little outbreak here in the Kentucky area. Uh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee, we had some tornadoes uh, down into portions of Alabama, Georgia, Florida. We have some tornado reports as well. The main store of the show, though, obviously is going to be over here towards the Central Plains, where we had a big tornado outbreak, obviously. Uh, and this was through portions of anywhere from Iowa uh, into uh, Nebraska is where we've seen that first tornado outbreak with an enhanced risk. Uh, yes, there were three violent tornadoes on the ground during an enhanced risk, and that kind of included more or less this area right here where we're seeing some of those uh, reports uh, of strong tornadoes and damage uh, from theirs, as well as that, not just the tornadoes, but we do have st uh, strong winds, hail in excess of one 1.5, 2-inch hail up here in South Dakota, 2.5-inch hail. Uh, and then as we come down here, we have that day two tornado outbreak, and this included uh, a lot of Kansas uh, into Oklahoma, Texas, uh, and then portions of Arkansas and Missouri. Uh, there was a good amount uh, of tornadoes on here, as we see uh, a lot the sulfur tornado, uh, as well as that the Ardmore tornado and all that area down here. Uh, and then back here, I don't have the reports open, but we do have some more tornado reports uh, in this area from yesterday, where we've seen a 5% tornado threat highlighted. 
and right now severe weather is expected to continue if you want to follow this guy this guy's name is weather watch it's a team of people who issue unofficial uh, mesoscale discussion so i do recommend uh, following that uh, it's not uh, official so keep that in mind when following the spc it is something cool to look at and we have a higher risk uh, through portions of generally uh, oklahoma areas uh, for severe weather for the next uh, few days uh, this uh, does stretch anywhere from Chicago down into Texas, but severe weather potential still expected to continue in this area. Let's go ahead and cover that. And that's where we're seeing the little area today. Today we have an enhanced risk of severe weather, Texas, uh, slight risk through Texas, and then again we have that marginal where we're seeing that weather watch uh, created map. Uh, from Chicago all the way down into portions of Texas. This does include Abilene, Brownwood, uh, through that severe, that major severe risk. Tornado forever. This is not expected to be driven, but there is a good amount of uh, that tornado risk where we could see a possibility of a couple tornadoes touch down on the ground. Uh, wind threat. 15% where we're seeing that main threat though is going to be 30% significant hail where we have a possibility to see two maybe three inch in diameter hail or larger. I do know yesterday we seen four inch hail uh, in portions uh, of Oklahoma. Uh, so that that's pretty wild uh, to see with that 30%. So keep in mind, big hail possible. Uh, strong to severe thunderstorms will be possible today from parts of the upper Midwest into the southern Great Plains. The greatest potential appears to be over parts of the northwest into central Texas. And you can pause to read the hypnosis here. And then as we continue into tomorrow, a little bit more of a smaller risk, but we do have this slight risk through portions of western Texas. Uh, marginal risk stretching from the panhandle up into portions of Nebraska, Iowa, those areas that were previously hit. General thunderstorm stretching from most of the central uh, Midwest into the eastern United States. Tornado threat, once again, not expected to be too wildly driven. Uh, it is going to be mainly a tornado-driven threat, though, where we do see that 15% wind, 15% significant hail. Uh, tornado, once again, possibility to see a couple tornadoes touch down here. Uh, scattered, strong to severe thunderstorms will be possible uh, Friday afternoon into early Saturday morning across portions of the central slash southern Great Plains. And if you want to, you can pause to read the hypnosis here as well. And then as we get into day three, once again, through the same areas, portions of New Mexico into Texas, Oklahoma, uh, we do have this area of severe weather, marginal risk. The probability of this being anything much is just a 5%, so not very high, uh, but we will continue to watch that to see what comes of it. Uh, scattered storms, some possibly severe, will be possible over parts of the Southern High Plains, and you can pause to read the synopsis here. And now even though we have kind of a lower level set of storms where we're seeing not much strong with that slight, that marginal risk after today's enhanced, uh, we do have this 15% coming right back at us on day five. This is four. I had to look at my date again. This is for Monday. We do have this 15% confidence of severe weather through portions of Texas. Uh, this does include multiple other states, anywhere from central Oklahoma up into Nebraska, Iowa, uh, Missouri. Uh, and this is possibly could be somewhat of a more significant severe event where, where we talk about on this channel a lot. Uh, anywhere from the day four through eight where they are able to highlight it that far out could possibly uh, turn into a severe weather event. Basically, what this is going through, if you would like to read through, is a, a short wave will develop across uh, the western uh, portions of the United States. Uh, this will become negatively tilted, uh, able to bring that severe weather potential onto Monday uh, for the most part. You, all threats are available for this for now. If you want to read this, uh, you can do that now. Uh, and then th there is also this area, uh, not highlighted on the actual map, uh, but we do have a possibility uh, to see some more uh, strong storms, severe storms, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, eventually uh, LA uh, into uh, Mississippi. National Weather Service with this risk as well, also highlighting a not only a tornado risk, uh, but a very large hail uh, and additional severe detail, uh, outlooks are likely as these details become more predictable. And as of now, if we're looking at the futuristic CSU models, right now there's not much wildly going on. Only a 5% of severe weather uh, that they're highlighting. As we do start getting into day 5, though, uh, the CSU model is predicting uh, somewhat of a 45% risk of severe weather. Possibly could be tornado-driven. We do not get that information, though. Uh, but there is a significant, probably uh, could be a upper-level event. The severe potential 5% stretches all the way from Pennsylvania up into North Dakota. But that main concern going to be four portions of central North uh, uh, Oklahoma and into portions uh, of Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. 
This risk continues to shift east into portions of Missouri and into Arkansas, eastern Texas. 15% uh, right here that we're seeing stretches all the way into portions of literally all of Kentucky, most of Tennessee, uh, a lot of the Ohio Valley where we could possibly see uh, in the upcoming days a severe weather event. And then continue to agree with that uh, to 30% uh, being highlighted by the CSU, one for, once again, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, then the other one for the Ohio Valley, this includes Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia, and portions of Central North Kentucky. Uh, I personally am in this. We will continue to monitor as these progresses to see if the Storm Prediction Center issues anything out with this. Now, if we're looking at Radar Omega for today's set of storms, we did have a lot of convection down here. Uh, this is now moving into portions of Louisiana and into Texas. It is now remaining pretty clear for the main risk area. The sun is shining, cloud cover is moving out, uh, and this can help a decent amount with the severe potential because the, the convection uh, can help a lot with limiting severe severity. Uh, it's not currently doing that, and we will have a couple hours uh, of that. Besides a little couple, a little shadow. Hour, uh, sparkles every now and then it is remaining pretty clear and that can help uh, to with that heating of the day to spark some severe potential and so we're seeing that about 6 p.m. these storms expected to start uh, just north of Abilene uh, Texas this is for central slash western Texas these are expected to grow pretty rapidly over the next few hours uh, and then uh, eventually uh, by 10, 11, 12, they will die off uh, for the most part. We will have another set of storms kind of forming below Abilene. Uh, we could see a lot of these be uh, become supercellular. Uh, and then this can turn into a nocturnal threat for not only large hail, but damaging winds uh, and uh, a couple tornadoes possible as well. Uh, by 4 a.m. though, uh, this is Eastern Standard Time, everything out of the Abilene area uh, will remain, uh, will kind of have died off for the most part. And the HRRR are seeing these to be somewhat semi-discrete, so being able to help with that soapy cellular function uh, for large hail, damaging winds, and a couple tornadoes, uh, but, you know, not looking at this to be too wild of a threat. Uh, we do have this also, the Squall Line set of storms, uh, right here, uh, and this is stretching through that slight slash marginal risk of severe weather. Uh, and then we have other areas up here into the Chicago area where we're seeing this line of storms that can once again also bring a little bit of that severe potential. So I think I've rambled on long enough for this video. I've got 1234 uh, on this recording. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Stay safe. Make sure you have a way to receive alerts. Thanks for choosing Skycast, and I'll see you guys in the next one.